This is News 3 at 6. Well, right now, heavy rain continues to fall across southern Wisconsin. Dane County under a flash flood warning right now. Water covering many roads on Madison's west side, making it dangerous for drivers. This is a live look. First Street, Johnson Street. This video showing the water there. Please stay safe. Turn around if you see water on the roadways. Let's check in with meteorologist Dave Caulfield. Dave, it has been a long time, I think, since we've seen the rain on the west side like this over our studios. Yeah, it's very, very hard hitting right now, and that rain is coming down very heavy at times. We do have a flash flood warning in effect for Western Dane County. This includes the west side of Madison until 830. Very heavy rain showing up. You can see the shades of orange and red just uh, south of the Madison marker there. Live look in Madison on the WIC TV Skycam actually seeing a little bit of improvement over the past couple of minutes, but not by much. Still very heavy rain out there. Remember, if you do encounter flooded roadways, turn around, don't drown. I know it might be tough with all the rain that we've received over the past few hours, but try and avoid that flooding at all costs. Temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. Wind speeds are very strong as well, so that's really contributing to reduced visibility on the roadways as well. About 25 mile per hour winds in Madison right now. This evening, scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms, heavy rain and localized flooding likely in some areas of southern Wisconsin. We'll have another look at the radar and talk about when all of this comes to an end in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Dave, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, many parts of our area are getting hit hard with that rain. Watertown still trying to recover from the flooding that happened there last week. Our Keely Arthur joins us live from Watertown right now with how that area is handling all of this. Keely? That's right, Eric. With the Rock River and the rain, the city is certainly living up to its name. On Friday, the city got eight inches of rain. It held off this weekend, but it is picking back up. Let's show you that video from last Friday. Eight inches of rain in the city within four hours that caused major roadways to flood issues to the water systems. Some cars even floated away. Now there weren't any injuries, but the damage was widespread and with the rain continuing, the worry is pretty widespread too. People are concerned, you know, when, when we hear we're going to have another chance of flooding, um, people get concerned. I had water in my basement. Many, many people had water in their basements. The mayor says crews from police, fire, streets, and water are working 24-hour shifts, so it's really all hands on deck. And now, for anyone living in the Watertown area, the streets department is handing out free sandbags. For anyone watching this, if you do see flooding in any roadway, the mayor wants you to know not to drive through that. That's incredibly dangerous. But things right now starting to kind of taper off, so hopefully it will hold off through the night. Eric? Yeah, that is good to see. At least for now, it's not raining. Let's hope it stays that way. Keely Arthur live in Watertown. Keely, thank you. You can stay safe and informed with News 3 tonight. So we see this heavy rain, simply download our Channel 3000 weather app available for free in your phone's app store. A wide receiver for the Wisconsin Badgers facing two counts of sexual assault. According to court records, Quintez Cephas has also been suspended from the team for violating the UW student athlete discipline policy. The charges against him include third degree sexual assault and second degree sexual assault of an intoxicated victim. Both are felonies. Officials with the Madison Police Department say Officers were sent to a hospital back in April to meet with a woman who said she had been sexually assaulted by Cephas in his apartment after drinking with Cephas, who she says didn't drink that night. She also claims he assaulted another woman who does not remember it happening. The team did practice today. Afterwards, wide receiver A.J. Taylor said he and other players on the team support their fellow teammate. We're definitely a very close group of receivers. Like, you know, we all love each other. Um, but with it, yeah, I mean, we're all going to support each other. Like, you, Danny, Ken, we're all going to support each other, and we're just going to like, come together and, and work even harder. Cephas has spent the last five games of last season recovering from a broken leg that happened in the Indiana game last year. His return to the field was a highly anticipated one. He led the team in touchdown catches a year ago. In a statement posted to Twitter on Saturday, Cephas said he was, quote, wrongfully accused and innocent of any allegations associated with this consensual relationship. Cephas will have an initial appearance in court on Thursday morning. It is still unclear what caused two boats to crash in Lake Winnebago Saturday night, killing two sisters. 20-year-old Cassandra Labs and her 26-year-old sister Lauren 
Karen died in this crash. Their bodies pulled from the lake yesterday. Autopsies are now underway. Another person on the boat with the lab suffered serious injuries. A dog on that boat also died. Madison police are calling an attack against a pizza delivery driver brutal. They're now looking for the person responsible. Our Madeline O'Neill has more on what happened and what drivers do to stay safe. Maddie. Eric, please tell us it's not unusual for delivery drivers to be targeted for robberies. What is unusual about last night's robbery on the south side is the fact that the driver was attacked before he even had a chance to try to give up his money. Here at Glass Nickel, you can think of the kitchen as home base. But for the pizza to end up at your doorstep, it takes a delivery driver who through rain or shine will hit the roads. Everybody's pretty respectful of delivery drivers. And getting wet is the least of their concerns. We tell them to be very aware of their surroundings. Co-owner of the West Side's Glass Nickel, Noel Johnson, says the store has put together several safety procedures after a string of delivery driver robberies in the city years ago. That includes guidelines for drivers like only carrying $15 at a time and not accepting cash orders after 10 at night. We try to talk about it and uh, remind everybody about safety and just make sure that people are thinking about it. Especially after a robbery like the one Sunday night. It's really a, a despicable crime. Madison police say it happened to a driver from a different restaurant who pulled up to the 2000 block of 3rd Avenue on the south side where a man told him the pizza was his. According to police, after the suspect tried to get the driver to come with him to a dark area behind a building and wasn't able to pay for the pizza, the driver turned to leave. He's going back to his, his car and gets tackled from behind and then you know brutally beaten. Uh, by this person who ends up taking, again, $20 from him and uh, threatens to kill him. That's awful. I mean, it, it, it's scary. For Johnson, it serves as a reminder of how important it is to do all she can for her drivers to make it back safe and sound. I mean, you don't want it to happen to your, one of your employees, but you don't want it to happen to anybody. Police say the delivery driver attacked last night basically did everything right. And as mentioned, this was an unusual case. The victim had face injuries and a broken tooth, but he is out of the hospital. Police consider it substantial battery and are making this case a priority on the south side. Madeline O'Neill in studio with us. Maddie, thank you. A liberal advocacy group is raising some questions tonight about the governor's use of state planes. One Wisconsin now rolling out its report at the state capitol today saying since tw uh, September 2015, Governor Walker made 869 flights in a state plane at a cost of $818,000 to taxpayers. The group admitting those flights were for state business but claimed the trips were with an aim of boosting a 37% approval rating following a failed presidential run. Scott Walker had a political problem. And as a 25-year career politician, Scott Walker came up with a political solution to that, to rehab his image. In a statement, the governor's press secretary called the report a, quote, gross mischaracterization of Governor Walker's dedication to visiting with the people of Wisconsin and pointed out some of those trips were for funerals, disaster area visits, and meetings with schools. The University of Wisconsin system plans to ask regents this week to request an additional $107 million in the next state budget. System officials say around $82 million would go toward meeting performance-based goals in four areas. Student success, student progress toward graduation, workforce contributions, and improving efficiency. The remaining $25 million would go toward providing greater access to courses and programs in high-demand areas of science, engineering, healthcare, and business fields. Regents are set to vote on the request Thursday. Approval would send the request to the governor for consideration as he works on his executive budget. The Mount Horeb School District working to make sure students feel supported mentally and emotionally this school year. At least three Mount Horeb graduates or students have died by suicide since last November. Police say the death of a 10-year-old this summer is also being investigated as a possible suicide. The school board has been discussing ways to try to prevent future suicides, including hiring therapists and social workers in schools. The district is also applying for grants to get additional social services programming at the school. Just ahead, some controversial comments from the Madison Bishop tonight. It comes in response to the Catholic Church's growing sexual abuse scandal. The story next on News 3 at 6. My God.
Well, there you see the water, the rain causing flooding all over the area. This is a live look right now. This is Raymond Road on Madison's far west side. This is just east of the intersection with McKenna Boulevard. Again, if you see water covering the road, turn around. Do not try to drive through it. We will get an update on tonight's rain totals from Dave Caulfield in just a few moments. The sexual abuse scandal of the Catholic Church continues to grow. A recent report finding that over seven decades, more than 300 priests have been accused of sexually abusing more than 1,000 children. The response to the clergy abuse scandal from the Bishop of Madison creating a bit of controversy tonight. Bishop Robert Morlino issuing a letter to parishioners of the diocese over the weekend claiming homosexuality is one of the root causes of the sexual abuse. Our Jamie Perez is here to tell us about that letter and the response it's getting tonight, Jamie. Absolutely. So in that letter, the bishop does acknowledge that there is a major issue of sexual abuse within the church, but the LGBTQ community says the blame is in the wrong place. That letter mentions homosexuality being an issue numerous times, even saying that, quote, it is time to admit there is a homosexual subculture within the hierarchy of the Catholic Church that is wreaking great devastation in the vineyard of the Lord. Members of the LGBTQ community expressed their disagreement with that letter over Facebook. One member I spoke with says pointing out sexual orientation is missing the point on the real issue. It's just a, a, a sexual abuse problem and a power structure problem and they need to stop covering it up and really atone for and account for the structural problems that are leading to these issues and destroying lives. Neither the bishop nor the church were available for comment today, but we did get a statement via email saying that groups who are posting about the letter are, quote, cherry-picking portions to fit their agenda or claim the bishop is saying something that he is not. Now, to read the bishop's full letter, a link to that can be found on our website. That's channel3000.com. And while the bishop was not available for comment today, one of his assistants said that perhaps he would be available soon. All right, Jamie Perez reporting that. Jamie, thank you. Weight loss surgery is becoming a more common option for people who are seriously over weight. Doctors say it's one of the safest options for those patients, but for a quarter million people working in the state of Wisconsin, it's not covered by insurance. Lori Savani Hammer, one of those people, the 60 year old works for the state for the UW and says she's done all she can to lose weight through diet and exercise. Doctors say she is a good candidate for bariatric surgery, but the $25,000 procedure isn't covered by the insurance she has through the state. The people that sit on that board must never have had weight issues must never had, have to struggle with your knees or your hips or the, the self-consciousness that, that comes with being overweight. I think everyone is entitled you know, to fair um, you know, and, and honestly fair and just treatment for their obesity. Um, and you know, currently I don't know that uh, our state employees have that. Tonight, we'll share more of Lori's story and how she wants a state board to change coverage for those 250,000 people under the state's insurance plan. But more of that story coming up tonight on News 3 at 10. We'll be back with a check of your forecast in a moment. Welcome.
All right, here's some video showing the impact of the rain out there. This is on Commerce Drive near the Menards on Madison's west side. The water there, many areas knee deep. Obviously, first responders are there making sure people get through safely as well. Again, they're asking not to drive onto any water covered roads. Avoid it if at all possible. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield monitoring this weather system right now to see when perhaps might all end, Dave. Yeah, we've gotten some reports over the past couple of minutes of rain totals of about five inches in the Verona area in just the last two to three hours alone. So this is very, very heavy rain coming down. We also got some pictures from Madison's west side. This one comes from Desi Olson. You can see the flooding there in the street and look at this. Lawns turned into lakes for a lot of us on Madison's west side. This is coming from Kevin in Fitchburg. Stay safe. Remember, if you do encounter flooded roadways, which looks very likely over the past couple of hours and next couple of hours, turn around and don't drown. That flash flood warning goes until 830 for Western Dane County. That includes Madison and specifically the west side of Madison. Also Cross Plains, Wanakee and Fitchburg down closer to Belleville. And as we zoom out, we could see that this is really the first round of rain. We really never got rid of it across much of Dane County. And we have more rain on the way just to the south. This low pressure system continuing to push those rain bands to the north and northwest. So we're watching for additional rain to fall over the next couple of hours into later tonight and even into the overnight hours in some spots. So unfortunately, this is far from over, folks. We've gotten some reports, as I mentioned, of close to five inches of rain in Verona. Radar precipitation estimates in just the last three hours of about three to four inches of rain in portions of Dane County, and that's why that flash flood warning is in effect. Other areas with a flash flood watch still conditions could deteriorate and produce some more flash flooding in other areas for southern Wisconsin into tonight. So an alert day in the forecast for tonight for the strong to some severe storms still possible, but mainly we're focused on that heavy rain and localized flooding and that threat goes into tomorrow morning. I think the gusty wind threat and isolated tornado threat is coming to an end over the next couple of minutes. Hopefully we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Our time lapse in Madison showing the rain really nonstop since we got to this afternoon and right now a little bit better, but we're also noticing the clouds off in the distance and also some lowerings there as well. We're keeping a close eye on that. Nothing uh, to worry about just yet, but there is still that chance of a quick spin up tornado with these systems and 69 degrees right now in Madison with some rain falling at the airport, actually down to 68 in Madison. Dew points still pretty high. So the main message that I want to get across here is that even though the rain may be coming to an end where you live, there are multiple rounds still on the way. This is not over just yet, so be vigilant. Vigilant. You're going to encounter some flooding, especially on the west side of Madison and as you head west in Dane County. So turn around and don't drown. Visibility is reduced in those heaviest downpours, but looking a little bit better in Madison compared to last hour. Tonight, scattered showers, heavy rain is possible with temperatures in the low 60s. We're in the mid 70s tomorrow, breezy and cooler with a chance of showers. So future track not too optimistic. I really do hope this happens because it's not showing too much more in the way of rain. But as this low tracks through, we're still we still have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, so it's the potential for some more flash flooding is there as we head into tomorrow morning. Then the heavy rain threat leaves us by the time we get to Tuesday afternoon. A couple more showers are possible, though, and Wednesday we are finally clear and we can put this all behind us dry out a little bit on Wednesday and Thursday, Friday, some more showers and thunderstorms possible. The weekend looking warmer with temperatures in the mid 80s into next week will be warmer than that even into the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees with better chances for showers and storms arriving next Tuesday. The high expectations for this year's Badger football team are pretty high all over the country. The story is coming up in sports. News 3.
We know Badger football fans are expecting a big season. Today we find out what people across the country think. In the Associated Press preseason football poll, the Badgers are picked as the fourth best team in the country before the season starts. Only defending champion Alabama, Clemson, and Georgia are ahead of the Badgers. In fact, one voter gave Wisconsin a first place vote. Also from the Big Ten, Ohio State 5th, Penn State 10th, Michigan State 11th, Michigan 14th. Now the Badgers are getting down to it. Only 11 more days until the season opener against Western Kentucky at Camp Randall a week from Friday. We're to that sometimes uncomfortable point of camp for the players where they've been grinding for a while yet still have some more time before they finally kick off the regular season. We had like 14 days straight of pads. I need like a break or something. I need to go chill at the pool at the hub or something. And now it's kind of just... I guess it's more of just the camp field just because it's more of the grinding kind of period, but I mean, you kind of get used to it after a while. It's kind of uh, the scrimmage that we had two days ago. I mean, I think that was kind of one of those things. I mean, I felt good. I felt running. I was running around pretty good. So I, mean, I think when game time comes around, everybody will kind of get that extra kick. The Packers hit the road for their final two preseason games. They'll play at Oakland against Jordy Nelson this Friday night at 9.30, then play at Kansas City Thursday, August 30th. Of course, during that time, the rather bulky roster will cut, be cut to a final 53 men along with practice squad players. That means it's crunch time for a lot of guys who want to realize their dream of playing in the NFL. Mike McCarthy knows how tough it will be for a lot of those hopeful players. It's a long year. Um, to get the team into a flow so you can encounter all the adversity and the challenges that are in front of you. That, that's, a, that's an important characteristic that we're looking for in all of our men because it's, uh, it's needed to, to go, you know, get this done in the long haul. So I, the biggest thing for these rookies is there's no time to change. You know, it's just time to keep, keep working and, and, and stay after the grind of getting better and, and stay true to the fundamentals and the basics. Um, and, you know, they're all at a position now where they're competing. You know, they just, we just all got to play better. We had a great start to our Prep Mania game of the week as uh, Madison Memorial edged Sun Prairie last Friday. This Friday should be just as entertaining. Another Big 8 rivalry, Middleton at Verona. We'll have the game live on TVW and live streamed on our website, channel3000.com, Friday night at 7. And the longest high school football winning streak in the country is over. Last Friday night, Kimberly's 70-game winning streak ended at home against Fond du Lac. They tied it with a touchdown in the fourth quarter, but as time ran out, Fond du Lac's Jared Sherbel hit a 26-yard field goal to give the Cardinals a 31-28 win, stopping the longest winning streak in Wisconsin state football history, the papermakers' first loss since the state quarterfinals in 2012. All our kids, are, you know, extremely proud of them. I love them, and that, you know, I, that, that love is unconditional. So it doesn't matter if they win or lose. If they fought the way they did tonight, you know, that, we're, we're just really proud of them. And going all the way back to, like you said, 2012, you think about all those kids and all those, you know, coaches and all the time that was invested in that. Proud to be a part of it. Steve Jones, a classy guy, and a pretty yeah. classy reaction. That's yeah, a thing. lot of emotion from his team there on the field. Yeah. we got to get a final check of what's going on out there. Yeah, still have that flash flood warning in effect for Dane County until 8.30. Still some very heavy rain out there, and more could be on the way for some of us. Doppler track future is really not letting up on this rain over the next three hours. But tomorrow, not too much rain on the way. Temperatures will be in the low 70s with a couple of showers possible in the afternoon. Now, a live look at Gammon in the Beltline right there. Quite a mess. A lot of areas to avoid out there. We'll have more updates tonight at 10. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.